Well, here we go guys, back at it again. As you can see, I'm back down on a local carp fishery and yeah, just booked on for 24 hours. There's a lake behind me, looking absolutely lovely. Just arrived in the peg, it's completely empty and actually the lake is looking pretty good at the moment. There's not many people on. Hopefully there's not gonna be many people on tonight. It's gonna stay nice and quiet. I'm gonna get on some quick bites. If not, then I'm just hoping for morning bite time. I fished here a couple of weeks ago, had a couple of nice ones out, one early morning and one in the evening since I arrived. So without messing around too much, I'm gonna set my rods up, get them out, and see if I can find some spots. Catch you in a bit. So here we are guys, um, everything's all set up now pretty much. I'm just sat back in the bivvy now, just chilling for a bit. I'm set up in peg five on this lake. I just flicked a bit of bait and it went straight in my eye. So if it's looking a bit red, that's why. Set up in peg five. It's looking really good actually. I'll show you around the peg in a bit. I'm just watching the water at the moment. I've just got the rods out. Got my right hand rod over to a far tree. The one I actually fished a few weeks ago and produced an early bite on that one. So that one's feeling really good. I managed to clip up from this peg, which is only one peg along, but it's actually another whole wrap and a bit. So there's quite a bit of distance difference. But I managed to get that one literally brushing the branches. That one went super, super close. I don't really know how I didn't put it in the tree, to be honest with you, but it went out absolutely on the button. So feeling really good about that one. So yeah, I'm not fishing that one super slack because I still want to feel some indication down this end, but it's slack enough for the first few feet at least because I managed to sink the line right down. And my left hand rod, that's out in open water. They've been showing quite a bit between that tree and in the open water, and it's out about 10 wraps. I haven't actually wrapped that one up, but I think what I'm going to do is keep an eye on the water for a little bit longer. I'm going to wrap up my third rod you only fish two rods here but i'm gonna wrap up my third rod and get that one completely ready at about 10 wraps so i know exactly where i'm at it's not so much about spot fishing on here it's just about presenting the bait roughly where the fish are and i feel like that's about 10 10 wraps something like that so there's been fish showing actually um, quite a lot out by that tree and also more towards open water. So yeah, they've been fizzing up and they're still fizzing up all over it. The wind's picking up a bit now, so we're quite sheltered here, but it does drop in up over the tree line. So yeah, in terms of rigs and baits, I've pretty much gone in with the same approach as my previous session on here, and that is a boilie only approach using a little wafter on the hair. But in terms of rigs, I'm actually going in with like a multi rig slash slip D rig. It's become sort of pretty much my favorite go-to rig over the last, I don't know, a few months. And yeah, it seems to be super aggressive. So I'm gonna sit back now, get the kettle on and get something to eat maybe because I'm absolutely starving. go first fish of the session 31 pound and three ounces and beautiful common carp yeah absolutely rummy right all over the lake that one was the fish out to the far tree don't want to keep it out of the water too long because it absolutely beat me up try and do a few steals and then i'll get this one back but yeah absolutely buzzing big old beastie quite long and got a big old deep belly on it very similar to the fish I had a week or so ago. It's got a bit of a sore on its side. Gonna get a little bit of carp care on it. Give it a bit of treatment. Oh, she's gonna go. Let's lay you down a sec. There we go. Yeah, absolutely buzzing. Right, let's get this one back. Well guys, absolutely over the moon with that one. 31 pound and three ounces. Here's another mint condition common. Yeah, they, they're absolutely lovely in here. Some of them are big old beasties. 
That one fell to the same rigs and baits as last time. Crustacean and black pepper boilies. Fished with a little matching wafter on a little multi-rig slash slip D-rig. Um, yeah, absolutely buzzing about that. It's just come up to midnight now and I'm getting a bit tired. So uh, yeah, gonna get my head down for a few hours and see if we can catch one in the night. If I catch one, then I will let you guys know. If not, then I'll see you guys bright and early in the morning. We'll see how the morning pans out. Well, morning guys. So yeah, it's a little bit of an uneventful night really. Had a few occurrences, the bobbin pulling up, a uh, little liners. And actually when I reeled the rod in this morning, the lead had been ejected. So I think I've probably been done during the night. I was fishing very close to that tree. Not really sure what that says. I'm gonna see how the day pans out and if I have any other weird occurrences, then yeah, I'll make some changes. But yeah, so I'm just sat back here this morning. It's about seven o'clock now. Just cup of tea on the go um, just sitting back watching the water just gonna have a little bit of breakfast and chill I've been up probably I don't know a couple of hours now since first light and I've been watching the water really intently there's been fizzes everywhere I have chopped and changed a little bit rigs and baits are still exactly the same but I've just been moving the spots around a little bit not really introducing any bait just lowering the rod onto fizzes all of the sort of fizzing activity has moved out now from sort of the edges of the lake out into open water I'm hoping when the sun picks up a little bit and the wind drops off I'll be able to see a little bit more it looks like to me that they've moved into sort of the center channel of the lake if it stays like that then maybe I'll get a rod on that as well I've got my left hand rod at the moment just about two rod lengths out directly in front of my peg and it's nice because I can actually watch exactly where it is and put a little bit of bait over the top they were fizzing up there that's why I got that rod on there and then they continued to fizz for a while yeah and then it moved off and everything sort of slowed down a little bit and again my right hand rod is tight against that far tree I feel like if either of them gonna do a bite it's gonna be that one on the tree today it just feels really good out there for a bite it's nice and warm it's a nice little sheltered spot and also it's one of the only spots on the lake that's actually got some proper cover so yeah we'll see how that goes my left hand rod I think I'll probably have a bit of a play around with today maybe I'll have a little go I don't really like to try and find spots this far into a session fishing just literally for a drop um, for showing fish I don't really want to be putting in loads of bait and spreading it all over the swim I just want to be putting you know one little bag of time or maybe just a little single over the top and see how that goes so this morning a couple of people have just moved in two pegs to my right hand side so yeah we're gonna see how that sort of pans out that is the sort of closed corner on this peg fishing that willow tree that's out there chucked a few leads out i'm not sure how that's going to affect the fishing but maybe that's going to push the fish out from that corner out into open water as well keep an eye on that and see if the fish is still showing over there it's a lively one here we go this one's a bit smaller only about I don't know, 15 16 pounds, something like that. It's incredibly lively. And yeah, good run. And he uh, tore off the spot, almost wiped out my other rod, but managed to get him in, luckily. So, got another rod back out on the spot, nice and quick. Um, While well, this one's resting in the margin. And yeah, let's slip this one back and hopefully we'll get something a little bit bigger. Well, there we go, guys. That's another fish in the bag. A lovely little common, probably 15, 16 pounds, something like that. I never really weighed it, just by guess. Um, it's quite a stocky little thing. It wasn't very long. Yeah, it gave a really good fight, and I find those smaller ones do take off quite well. It was really aggressive, it was just absolutely shooting across the pond. It swam underneath my other line, so I was getting the bob and pull up on the other one. At first, I thought it was a double take, but no, it was just that fish taking out my line, but just enough to just lift the line, basically. It wasn't, I'm not worried about it moving the spot or anything like that. So that one stayed out, just sunk the line down, played it into the side and it come in nicely. Beat me up a little bit on the bank, but that's just because I had to play it quite hard to get it in around that other line and away from that tree. But yeah, absolutely over the moon. That was another fish to the same rigs and baits. So just uh, for take a little minute while that rod is out. So basically I've got three rods on the go here. I'm only fishing two, but that third rod gives me a chance to prep and just in case I get a take or I want to move spots or cast to a shoaling fish or whatever, I've got a, a rod ready to go and I'm not changing anything up at all. I'm just keeping it the same. So basically it's a, a little leader about a foot and a half long, little lead core leader, well, a leadless lead core. So it's like super, super supple, tiny little slick lead clip with a lead on there so I can drop the lead. So a little, 
anti-tango sleeve and as you can see that lead is actually only just slid on there so that will actually slide away it still gives it enough for the bolt rig effect the lead will slide away should it come into contact with any like uh, snags or anything like that it'll either drop the lead or just slide straight up and then it's a little rig well it's about the length of my hand with like a soft coated braid and there's a little stripped back section there just before you get to the multi-rig section and that's just like a little slip d multi-rig there um, exactly like i've been tying previously the only addition is that I've put a little hook bead on just to sort of trap that slip D section so in the cast it's not gonna all pull up on itself and then everything be up the other end and then have rubbish hooking properties. So yeah, it's just something I've sort of been playing around with a little bit. But yeah, this is my go-to rig at the moment, especially for fishing like wafters over the top of boilies or if I'm fishing particles, then you can just put a little stack of fake corn on or whatever. But yeah, this is absolutely brilliant. It's doing me the bites at the moment. It's done me two bites this session so far, and it did me a couple, a couple of weeks ago when I was over here. And that's the uh, winning combo. So if you're interested in seeing how I tie this rig, feel free to check out my reels. I'm always uploading little shorts and reels onto Instagram, TikTok, and on YouTube. Just little quick how-tos to tie the rigs that I love to use. Feel free to check them out. That's pretty much my go-to now for anything on the deck. And then it's pretty much just a small handful of other little rigs that I use for pop-ups and stuff like that. Yeah, I try and keep it as simple as I can these days. Simple and effective. So the time now is, yeah, it's just gone 11 o'clock. So um, had that bite about half an hour ago now. So yeah, probably I'm gonna guess that was sort of the end of bite time really. But the way the day's been going, it's been really bright hot sunshine one moment and then it comes over all cloudy overcast and the temperature drops right off when that sun's gone so i feel like there's opportunities for bites pretty much all day if it stays like this when the wind drops off i'm still seeing fizzing so it's not like that end of morning bite time when all the fizzing and everything sort of windows out it's still looking pretty good in the moment generally speaking around half 10 11 o'clock something like that on here bite time does seem to dry up a little bit during the day but yeah i'm just going to keep my eyes peeled today try and watch the water as much as i can if i do need to you know, move a rod over onto some fish. I've got quite a lot of water in front of me. There's nobody in the pegs next to me on the left hand side so I've got that nice chunk of open water to cast to. Just going to keep my right hand rod to the tree probably for the rest of the session unless I see anything drastic happen because I do feel like that's a really good opportunity for a bite especially if the sun comes out because it's a nice little bit of shade for them to hide away in and also it's a nice little bit of structure so fish naturally gravitate towards that anyway. It's just a really nice little place for them to hide out. So yeah I'm going to keep that right hand rod over to that tree. My left hand rod I'm probably going to just roam around. I found a spot now um, where I've just had that bite from and I managed to get it back out on that same spot again so we'll see if that if that produces another bite then I'll keep it there if not if I see something like some real fizzers or something like that maybe I'll put a rod on just for a little bit yeah I don't really want to spread any bait around but just like three or four boilies on a little stringer or in a little bag and that should just be enough well if I get any updates I'll let you guys know I'm gonna just chill for a little bit then I might get some lunch on just gonna sit back and enjoy the rest of the day well as you can see guys I'm still sat in the brolly yeah the heavens opened it absolutely hammered down for probably 20 minutes or so and then the sun came back out so yeah it's a bit of a weird one so my session ends in about three hours or something like that no more fish yet unfortunately but that does mean i have to pack down the brolly and everything wet which is a bit of a pain in the ass really the brolly i'm hoping it will dry a little bit the wind is still fairly strong so maybe it's going to push that rain off I'm hoping that we don't get any more rain and it's going to dry out a little bit there's nothing worse than packing down after a completely dry session i mean in the last moments it rains and you have to pack everything down get it all back out again at home and dry it all out again that's an absolute pain yeah it's one of the things you can't choose so you have to take it as it comes so that's it from me guys unfortunately no more fish um i'm just looking out across the lake now and it's starting to look really good for a bite this evening um, but unfortunately my time is up just fishing 7 p.m till 7 p.m again on a 24 hour and yeah let's have a look at check the time yeah so we now have like 20 minutes left to be out of the peg I'm just gonna reel the rods in and get this brolly system down and I'm gonna be on the road. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys on the next one.